when I get off the ice today, I am going to show you the best body weight exercises for beginner goalies. So that'll be the ones that help you recover from your butterfly faster, help you slide in your butterfly faster, even the ones that help you with that post hold, you know, when your legs start burning, when they can't clear the puck and you kind of feel like crying a little bit, but you don't cry, but, but you do actually cry a little bit. But it's behind your mask, so you think no one can see, but then they do see and they're like, are you crying? And you're like, no, I just sprayed water in my face. I don't cry. And like, <laughs> I've never done that. I, you've done that. Anyway, I'm gonna finish my skate. I'll see you back in the lab. a great on ice session. I actually did my first ever double knee recovery, which I think doesn't really have that much application to games necessarily, but it felt good to be able to do it. And <laughs> so that was a win. Woohoo! Uh, welcome back to Goalie Training Pro TV. If you are new here, now is the time to hit subscribe. If you're already subscribed, hit the bell uh, and let's get into it. In addition to being an exercise physiologist who specializes in helping goalies win more games with fewer injuries, in fact, I've helped over 10,000 of you get a wider butterfly flare using my free butterfly challenge. I am also an intermediate goalie uh, who started playing goalie on ice uh, at the age of 47. And so I've been where you are. This is a video for beginners. I, I know the struggle is real and <laughs> trying to figure out how do I move and get in front of these pucks with all this equipment on? Give me some shortcuts so that I can do a better job on the ice. And that's what today's video is all about. I'm gonna give you five exercises that you can use, body weight exercises so you can do them at home that are gonna pay dividends on the ice almost immediately. There's a there's catch. You have to actually do the work, but if you do the work, you'll get the results. Here's something you've probably noticed on the ice, but never really thought about. Once I show you how we can train it to improve it, you'll be like, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> but it's the fact that, geez, getting up from the butterfly is really hard. It's sort of a different kind of strength coming from the bottom up than it is, you know, even if you work out at the gym at home or whatever and you do, you know, squats, that top down motion is really different from this bottom up motion, which is what we need anytime we're moving out of our butterfly. We need to build strength in that pattern and this is the simplest way to start. Going to do a bottom up split squat. So I'm gonna come all the way down so that my knee rests on the floor or I can put a little cushion there or whatever if I'm delicate like that. But what I'm gonna work on is just coming up and I'm gonna come up to a count of three. One, two, three, and then I'll just come back down, rest all my weight down. So I wanna completely unload the muscles in my legs and then I wanna have to initiate that drive back up. Resist the temptation to kind of go, you know, and sort of pop yourself up that first few inches. We want to try to build that strength through the full range of motion. Keep in mind, I've designed these as beginner exercises. Can we make it harder? Yes. <laughs> can we do more advanced versions? Absolutely we can, and we will with time, but this is the place to start. Let's say you do this for a while, it's getting easy for you. Start with about eight repetitions on each side, three seconds coming up. When that gets easy, if you have some dumbbells around home, you can you know, hold five pound, 10 pound dumbbells. If you don't have dumbbells, get your backpack, put some magazines, some water bottles, whatever, you know, to get it weighing 10, 15, 20 pounds. Hug it around your chest or, or even put it on your back and then use that to add a little bit of overload. That's totally cool. But our goal will be about two sets, eight on each side, three seconds coming up. For this next one, fire on, fire on your knee pads, because otherwise it's gonna be really uncomfortable on your knees, unless you like have a really cushy floor, or if you don't have knee pads, maybe you can put a sofa cushion or something like that down on the floor that your knees are gonna hit. But they, they need to be, uh, yeah, protected and cushioned. Getting this foot back up under us is kind of a tricky thing, and it's sometimes a little tricky too 
to keep our body nice and stable. You know, sometimes we do this when we pick up that leg, we kind of move our body there, which is not the best because think about it when we're on the ice. If I'm picking up this leg, it means I'm trying to go that way. Well, if the action is this way, I definitely don't want to be dropping down here. So the idea of this, we're just going to try to keep our hands, our torso stable. We're going to try to stay tall in our hips. We're going to do an alternate knee recovery. So we're going to come up, up, but staying low and then down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down. So see how my body's quite quiet. My head is maybe moving up and down a little bit, but it's also staying nice and quiet. I was leading with my left leg on that one. So I would do two to three reps leading with my left leg and then two to three reps leading with my right leg. And again, two sets like that. So think of this workout as a circuit. You're gonna work from the top to the bottom once, then go back top to the bottom twice. This next one is another one of those aha drills. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> um, and it's a good idea to keep your knee pads on or have something cushioning under your knee. But it's single knee balance. One of the reasons we have some trouble as beginners moving from our butterfly is just that we lose our balance. And when we lose our balance, we're not going to slide as far. We might have to put our, you know, our glove down or something like that. So we want to work on the balance, but it's a funny balance because it's kneeling balance. And really like you never work on that single leg balance. Yeah, we can do that sometimes, but we never work on single knee balance. So you're going to get into your half kneeling position, stay tall in your torso, brace with your abdominals a little bit as if you were going to get a little punch in the stomach. And then you're going to just lift that lead foot up and try to find that balance point, but I'm trying to stay pretty tall. So, you know, if I found my balance point here, well, mm, that's less than ideal. I'm going to try to sort of bring it back and find that tall balance point. So that's helping me, you know, use my hip muscles primarily to kind of control this interface between my thigh and my whole torso, but also bracing with your abdominals helps. It helps sort of get that hip and torso working together. You would hold that for 45 seconds to a minute on each side. It's going to be a gong show when you first do it. So don't worry, that's normal. But with practice, and you'll be surprised how quickly it's going to improve and you're going to really feel the dividends on the ice from this one. This is the one I was talking about when I was on the ice and it was one of the big things I noticed and it really changed the way I train goalies when I started playing myself on the ice is how crippling the static postures are. So, you know, sometimes when the puck's in your end and you're moving and you're following, and it's tiring, but I found almost the worst was when it was just stuck in my end or like I was, especially if I was hugging the post and the puck was stuck down in here and I just had to hold this position, hold this position. My legs were burning so bad. It was really, really hard. So we're going to work. This is a very specific exercise because we're going to do just that. I call it a post hold. So I will get sort of the stance I would have imagining that my hip and my skate are on this post. Sometimes I'll you know, think of where my stick would be. I'll even turn my head because I'd be watching the play to see what's going on. And I'm going to hold that position. I'm going to start by holding for 10 seconds. Then I'll switch to the other side for 10 seconds. And you'll do three to each side with a 10 second hold each. Could you bump it up to 15 seconds? Yes, you could. But make sure that you're staying really low in the legs, almost exaggerating how low you're getting in the leg. Not silly, but like getting really low down there. So there's a lot of load. Your quads should be burning at the end of that hold. And my final beginner exercise is catching with your glove. Now you can do a ball off the wall and catch. That's fine. My preferred tool is called the catch ball. Um, and it is, I think if you go to prolabsports.com, that's where you can order one. But I like it because I don't need to throw a ball against the wall if, if by some odd chance I don't catch the ball in my glove. <laughs> I don't have to chase it all over the basement. Uh, but you use whatever you ha have at your disposal. 
But what I want you to do is practice really keeping an eye on that ball and trying to follow it right into the pocket of your glove. When I was starting, and still, <laughs> as you can see by all the marks in the heel of my glove, I get a lot of pucks bouncing out because I'm not getting the pocket lined up properly. And that's why we never do hand-eye training or catching with our bare hand because my bare hand is here, <laughs> uh, whereas the pocket is here well above my hand. So I want to really learn that skill. As the ball is coming in, I want to keep an eye on it and almost try to see it, you know, watch it through the laces go right in to the pocket. And those of you who look at it and be like, oh, well, because it's on a tether, like it's on a bungee cord, it just comes right straight into the, the pocket of your glove every time. That that's, doesn't help. That's not hard. Try it, my friend. <laughs> Give it a try. And once you get good at it, too, there's other, other things you can do to make, you know, the trajectory a little less predictable. But this is, a, this is where you're at right now. It's just practicing following that ball right into your pocket and even leaning your body a little bit in the direction of that puck uh, to really get in front of all of them. So there are five of the best beginner body weight exercises that you can work on. If you are a beginner goalie, drop a comment below. Let me know what element of your game you're struggling with the most so that I can make more of these videos to help you get over that and to stop more pucks because stopping pucks is way more fun than <laughs> just <laughs> having them zing by you to the back of the net every time. If you haven't already done the butterfly challenge that I mentioned earlier, then definitely start that. Uh, you can go download it. I'll put a link in the description. If you're more of an app person, there's an app for that. Just go to your app store, search butterfly challenge. It's 100% free. Uh, <laughs> 99.9% .9 free. Uh, it's 100% free and um, it gives you a wider butterfly flare in 14 days or less. And yes, it actually does work. Uh, if you are looking for more like at home workouts, uh, you can check out this one that I made last year. Uh, it's a great little workout that you can do. You can almost, you can almost really do it every day if you wanted to. Every other day would be perfect. And now is when I ask you to hit that like button. Uh, I really appreciate it because it helps me to reach more goalies like you and help more goalies like you. So you can do that right now. That would be awesome. If you want more advanced body weight exercises for goalies, you just have to wait another week. That's exactly what I'm going to have for you next week. Every Wednesday I post new videos. So stay tuned for that one. Probably you should hit subscribe. If you're already subscribed, hit the bell so you don't miss that one. Uh, and if you're like, no, no, I just want you to design all my workouts and help me along the way, uh, I can do that as well. There's a link in the description that says something like, see if you qualify to work with me. <laughs> but really what we do is we'll have get on the phone, get on the Zoom, we'll have a chat, see if my online private online coaching program is going to be right for you. And if you're going to be the right fit for that coaching program. So we just have a chat. If it looks like it's the right fit, awesome. If it isn't the right fit, that's okay too. That link is in the description as well. That's it. That's all. I will catch you next week. I forgot to put on my workout shoes. Let me put on my workout shoes.